Welcome everybody, Jason and Alex. We're back for the fantasy football sackos. This is our first annual inaugural. No, it's the first annual is not. It's inaugural, and next year will be the second inaugural. I thought it's. I don't know. Anyways, <laughs> whatever you can call this, a lot of things. It's going to be called a lot of things. This is the first ever sackies. The sacky right. awards. This the sackies. is. Our year-end fantasy football awards show. What could be better? What could be better, right? Absolutely nothing uh, as your answer. So uh, (laughs) kick back, sit back, relax. Strap it down. We got some good White Sox baseball on tap for you today, Hawk Harrelson. Nobody gets that. I'm sorry. Nope. (laughs) (laughs) Let's go. Welcome to the Fantasy Football Sackos Podcast with your hosts, Jason Shellcross and Alex Krogh. Let's go! Fantasy Football Sackos. It's go time, baby. I am so jacked for this episode. Yes, it is. uh, It's a Sacco spin on the Dundies, now called the Sackies. For fantasy football purposes, our year end award show. Um, man, what a crazy fantasy football and now postseason it's been. We uh, we hit on a lot of things. And before we get into these awards, we got to at least mention these playoff games, uh, these championship games. Um, now I think you and I absolutely both got wrong the uh, the Packers Bucks game. We both thought the Packers are going to win. Yeah. Obviously, that didn't happen. But sure. At least what every single one of our prop bets hit in that game. So yeah, every single one except for one of them hit. Um, oh, I'll take that. Yeah. So Devonte Adams and over ninety two and a half receiving yards didn't hit, but his over catches hit. Uh, Aaron Jones under rushing yards hit. MVS catches over two and a half hit at plus odds. Robert Tanyan over three and a half catches at plus odds hit. Wow. Rogers over completions hit. Um, Man, so, we yeah, smoked we, that game. We were all over it. It just didn't. Uh, I mean, I lost money because I bet the line. S- yeah, I, I was betting on the Packers to win that game. And really, I mean, the Packers should have won that game. I, like, I was sitting on my couch um, just thinking like Brady's thrown three picks. Yep. I'm actively rooting for the Packers because I bet money on them. <laughs> so I'm texting with Packers fan <laughs> Packer friends. Like actively rooting for Aaron Rodgers, which is inherently weird. And I apparently forgot that Tom Brady just doesn't lose ever um, and no. just didn't take that into account. But the Packers should have won that game. I, it was such a strange game where they lost the game in like a minute 35 of total game time. First half, they're driving on the field. They like let the clock kind of burn down on a third down because they didn't know if they were actually going to go for it. And Rodgers completes the third down pass and they hurry up to the line and then he throws a pick. Yeah. Um, and then Tampa Bay is going to punt. They call a timeout. I literally have a text that said, what in the hell are they doing? Um, they convert the fourth <laughs> down and then they score a touchdown. I was like, well, I guess that's what they were doing. And then. Matt LaFleur should have watched closer for the second half, man. Oh, my God. That field so goal. The, hold on. We'll get there. The Packers get the ball to start the second half, and then Aaron Jones fumbles out for the game, cash that under on rushing yards. Yep. And, that, I mean, that's his last play as a Packers fumbling and basically losing the game for the and like, clinching losing the game for them. Um, But, yeah, it, like, I... I know one person that said they were right to kick the field goal there. And they, they were not. It, it was one of my cousins that was texting. It's like, well, you got to like, you got to take the points. It's like, it's like, no. no, you have to score a touchdown either way. You're on the eight yard line. Like you have the best red zone offense in the history of NFL football. Well, not ever, but like this year, they were 80% touchdown percentage in the red zone. Rodgers had his worst game the entire year in the red zone and you just, you kick a field goal, not knowing if you're going to get the, you're giving the Should've greatest never quarterback of all time, the ball back. Either way, you had to get a stop there, right? 
Like, why yeah. not go for the touchdown? Aaron Rodgers was two of nine passing with two touchdowns in goal to go situations on Sunday. The seven incompletions uh, are the most in his career. He was one of six targeting Devontae Adams in goal to go. He was 17 of 19 targeting Adams in goal to go this season, entering the day. 17 of 19 the entire season. And on Sunday, he went one of six. Like, Ouch. it was just a weird game. It was a weird game. The Packers should have won. That's four in a row, uh, not like consecutive years, but four conference game titles that the Packers, uh, when they got there, they lost. And the only conference championship game that Rodgers has won was against a backup Bears quarterback, like Todd Collins and Caleb Haney. Like, that's the only conference championship game that Aaron Rodgers has won. He's one of the greatest quarterbacks ever. Like, having to watch him for the last 14 years has been brutal. but. That's his only conference championship that ties Drew Brees and Rex Grossman. Like, are you serious right now that that those three quarterbacks all have the same amount of conference championships? That's no, absurd. Y- it, you're forgetting one very important person in there. <clears throat> Who? Tom Brady has as many NFC championship wins as Drew Brees oh. and Aaron <laughs> Rodgers. And Rex Grossman. And Rex Grossman. Tom Brady has started 20 seasons in the NFL and has gone God, to 10 man. Super Bowls. It's unbelievable. 50% of seasons he started, he's going to the Super Bowl. Every other year he goes. He has participated in eight. And really, he, he, got, he got hurt the one year, so it's really over 50% of the seasons he right. started. Yeah, first game, yeah. ACL, bye. Yeah. He has participated in 18% of all Super Bowls in history. 10 of 55. Again, as many NFC championship wins as Drew Brees and Aaron Rodgers. He has uh, side, side note, if, if I can just go back for a second, RIP to my 2008 fantasy football team when I had Welker and Moss on it, but totally different topic. <laughs> he has 33 playoff wins, by far and away most in history, which is more than double Joe Montana's 16 in second place. I was going to say, I think, I think there's, right, he's double. He's yes. double the closest person. He has more playoff wins over NFC teams in with eight after this past weekend than oh. Drew Brees does. Oh my God. With seven. <laughs> because of all the Super Bowl wins. He has more yeah. playoff wins over <laughs> NFC teams than Drew freaking Brees. Oh my God. That's N- crazy. He's the GOAT. Like full stop. It's- it's he's the greatest that there's ever going to be. I mean, you'd have to. Yeah. Well, there, hold on, though. There hold will be the, somebody on. that, you know, eventually comes close. You're, but like when people talk, you are potentially already seeing one right now where Mahomes. He's the only one he, that has a chance. Currently. I mean, if he wins this one and that's you know, two out of three two, years, two out of three with him starting two out of four with him in the league. That puts him on Brady pace, and he was in the AF. I mean, he's been in three straight AFC Championship games, where you know he's like the only one that might even have a chance. You know. Yeah. Now, I guess the thing that really concerns me there, and why I don't think it's possible for that to come close to twenty years, is because um, I don't want to say he's a system quarterback. He's not. He's a generational quarterback. But Andy Reid is sixty-two years old. There will eventually be a different head coach in Kansas city than Andy Reid in the next yep. five to 10 years. Whereas obviously Belichick has been with Brady this whole time. So yep. as far as like a team, you know, the, the core people in place, I don't think, I don't think we'll, I don't want to say never because we will one day, but probably not in my lifetime. Will we ever see a coach player combo like Brady and Belichick? I mean, but, if, if, so, I mean, Kansas City's lost one game in like their last 25 games, 26 games. So, I mean, you're seeing something now that like we're going to get a full dose of Mahomes for a while. Yeah. I mean, and, and, and Tom Brady is not, I, he's clearly not an idiot, right? But, and I, I think I tweeted this out from, from our account, you know, like a week ago. But if, if you look at the AFC quarterbacks, um, Right now, you have Mahomes, you have Josh Allen, you have Lamar, you have Herbert, 
you have Joe Burrow, you have Roethlisberger, you have like Mayfield to some extent. May Mayfield, yep, sure, absolutely. Lamar, like you, you to uh, potential, you know, just potentially that's that's a stretch. But I'm I'm just saying that you have a lot of really good to great quarterbacks in the AFC, and then you flip over the NFC, and I mean, who really scares you there? I mean, Rodgers well, is, is gone. Rodgers for now. is retiring. Like it's like there's no good quarter. Like you're you're afraid of Kirk Cousins. No. Like there there's I mean Russell Wilson is the is like the one like well above average quarterback in the NFC, and he like flounders the like he has starts out great and then sucks the second half of every season. Um. Like if you go just Tom Brady, like Dak, Dak Prescott. Yeah, like I'm just saying like there's no quarterbacks in the NFC. So he's like, oh, shit, the AFC quarterbacks are too good. I'm going to have a, I'm going to have to beat like two or three of them to get to the Super Bowl every year. Oh, man, I'll just I'll just go over to the to the NFC and uh, I'll face Taylor Heineke or Alex Smith in round one. Um. I will then follow that up and and face a very old Drew Brees who's retiring. Aaron Rodgers can't win a NFC playoff team or, or can't win an NFC championship game against a starting quarterback. And so like any it's clearly the like I mean I don't know how much longer he can keep it going at some point he's going to suck but he just <laughs> wins. It's it doesn't make any sense. It's amazing. All right. I think that does it for at least that game. Uh, we did mention our prop bets and how much they hit. Do you have any idea for the other game? Chiefs, Bills, how many of those? Yeah, props I don't hit? I don't remember. Yeah, I don't remember what you had specifically on that game. Uh, I personally had Kelsey over seven and a half catches over 96 and a half yards. That one hit. Um, I had Tyreek Hill over five and a half catches and over 79 and a half yards. You're like, no way that's going to happen. That hit. There's some cornerback that is going to be on him that he's way too slow to guard <laughs> Tyreek Hill. Um, so that one hit. Um, you like the Bills. I like the Colts. Uh, I had the Colts minus three. I had the Colts. What are you uh, talking about? Sorry, Colts. Colts. Chiefs. I had the Chiefs minus three. Yeah, Chiefs minus three and Chiefs minus two and a half and the over hit both of those. Uh, the only bet that I bet on that game and loss was the over digs catches and the over yards. Um, he was just, he disappeared. They were throwing to Cole Beasley over in the middle. He was playing on a freaking broken leg. Yeah. Um, so I'm surprised they, I'm surprised they did not get Diggs more involved. Um, but clearly it was in their game plan to, to take away the deep passes and they forced Josh Allen to check down. Um, I, I don't want to skip too hard, too far ahead of the Super Bowl because we'll talk about this next week, but it, there's the Kansas City Chiefs cannot play the same defense that they just played against Josh Allen because Josh Allen wants to go deep. And Tom Brady is more than comfortable with just taking like four yard passes and nickel and diming you to death. A la Peyton Manning in the 2007 Super Bowl against the Bears where they were just dropping into a cover two zone. And Manning was thrown to Joseph Adai. He was thrown to Dominic Rhodes and, and taking the check down passes for four to four to seven yards every time in front of Erlacher and Briggs. And that's how they won the game. So I'm really interested to see what the Chiefs defense is going to do and I'm already telling you that I'm going to be betting the over Leonard for net catches because I see them backing up and and preventing the deep balls to you know down the field to to Evans and Godwin and we'll see whatever happens with um with Antonio Brown my guess is he probably doesn't play but maybe because Scotty Miller is going to catch a deep ball every game um but yeah lock me in already for the over catches for Fournette because he's going to be checking down to him a lot I'm so pumped for that Super Bowl and for our Super Bowl bets. If you want to listen to all of our Super Bowl betting action, please listen to next week's podcast. Pew, pew, pew. Uh, we are fantasy football regular season, but in so postseason, many bets. in postseason, we aren't huge fantasy people. We'd rather bet it than do anything else. So uh, we switch pivot yep. to uh, betting. So if you're interested for some Super Bowl bets, we're going to cover some fun stuff, not just the game stuff. I want to, I want to bet over. You know how long the national anthem takes. I want to. I want to talk serious props here. So, yeah, stay tuned. For Those that are next the week. absolute worst bets, and I can't wait for you to bet the coin toss and other stupid crap like that. <laughs> All right. Well, it's been long enough. Let's get to these sackies, shall we? Sackies.
First up, now this is we're gonna dabble between serious awards and not so serious we're, awards. For for full disclosure, and I, I told you this before we before we actually started recording. I'm just trying to make you laugh uh, with <laughs> with like eighty percent of these. So I will apologize to the listeners in advance where some of these just might fall completely <laughs> flat, uh, and then Those I really the will ones. be hitting the Michael Scott. Yeah, I'll be hitting the Michael Scott notes um, <laughs> if if they're just terrible. But my my sole goal is just to just to try to pop Jason on this and and hopefully make you laugh too. Especially if you've been listening to the beginning, there's some some callbacks uh, to some very early episodes of the of the old Sackos. Oh my god! All right, um, I'm gonna start off with an actual fantasy football related award. And oh, shall we do those first? <sighs> I don't have them in any particular order, so I guess we can. I'll just be hopping okay. around. Um, but uh, my premature emasculator award goes oh, no. to Chris Carson. Chris Carson was running back five after five weeks, averaging almost 18 fantasy points per game and half PPR scoring. Uh, he was hurt in week seven after their bye in week six. He mixed the next four weeks. After that, he came back and over the final six weeks of the season, averaged just 12 and a half fantasy points per game. He is my premature emasculator. Um, was sort of a hole can I, in a can lot I take of people's... some credit. Go ahead. Yeah, I, I feel like we were calling to trade for trade him away right before that because he wasn't getting enough carries and, and Russell Wilson was throwing and Yes, and he you know he was running back five, but a, but a lot of it was because of receiving touchdowns. Yeah, well, which yeah, at the he beginning had, he had three I receiving mean, he, touchdowns in the first two games. Yeah, but his carry totals the first yeah. five weeks six carries in week one, alarms, alarm bells, and then seventeen against New England, fourteen against Dallas, sixteen against Miami. But week five against Minnesota, he had seventeen fantasy points on eight carries for fifty yards. Yeah. Yep. So, yeah, we were we were. I mean, not that you should listen to everything we say because half the stuff I say is stupid, and half the stuff Jason says is stupid. And when you add them up together, you just have to guess on the right fifty percent from both of us, and you're a hundred percent right every time. Um, we 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 were saying, hey, be alarmed of this, and then he got hurt, which really sucks. So yeah, all right, my, Chris Carson owners, I'm sure you probably didn't probably did not go very far. My runner up for that award was James Connor with how fast he started, but mm. the two point week one, he was consistent. The two point week one I was like, no, cause that wasn't really a hot out of the gate because he had that like fluke ankle thing. And then Benny Snell in week one, but then, yep. you know, the next what five, six weeks in a row uh, outside of the bye, he was in double digit fantasy points and was absolute trash down the stretch. Um, so I'm uh I'm actually a little surprised that you that you're not going to throw Malcolm Brown or uh, oh. your boy the Colts running back uh, Jonathan uh, Taylor in, in the mix where no 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 where you you know just decided to blow forty percent of your fab on him after what yeah 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 because wow. those I mean, those those two so and I'm already ready for week one next year where there's a backup running back that scores two random touchdowns. I'm already prepared to bid. Do not bid on this guy. I'm already, I already got it in the holster and ready to fire it. <laughs> I was off of Malcolm Brown because I was really on the Cam Akers train the whole year. And I thought that Malcolm Brown would be like the first month or two months out of the season while Akers learned the, yep. the playbook because they didn't have a preseason. So I wasn't really ever on the Malcolm yep. Brown train. Uh, and then Heem Hines, um, he's my fool's gold award winner because holy shit, oh. holy shit, uh, fool's gold, <laughs> my roller coaster award up and down zero points one week, 30 the next completely unpredictable. The coaching staff completely messed around with his role. It changed game to game by the end of the season it was the Jonathan Taylor yep. show. So. All right, what's your still, still finishes the top 20 running back? I know. God, well, the running back scoring in and of itself was pathetic, though. But yeah, it was trash. What do you Forky. got? Um, 
All right. So best value draft pick of the year for me came down to two guys. And I'm going to kind of leave this up to you to decide on who gets. I also have this as an award. uh, So you better pick the right person. Well, I've I've two guys written down. And so I'll actually leave it up to you to award the winner. Is that fair? Sure. I just hope I picked one of your two guys. Uh, If it's not, I'm shocked. It's between Travis Kelsey and Stefan Diggs. Okay. Yeah. uh, The guy I picked is one of those two. No, the guy I picked is one of those two. Okay. So it's got to be. I'm sure it's Stefan Diggs. It is Diggs. Yes. Yeah. Do you want to explain why? I honestly. Well, so I'm, I'm actually okay with arguing the Kelsey side of this. That's fine. Just on the sheer, just on the sheer fact that, yeah, you're taking Kelsey in round two, but he's, he outperformed all tight ends by so much and was what wide receiver, like five or something on the year at the tight end spot that, and, and we'll get into our rankings as we kind of build up to 2021's fantasy year. But like, he was such a difference maker and was, I mean, he had seven plus catches each of the last five weeks of the year. Wide receiver four. That he, he was, okay, so that's By five stupid. points behind that's just Stephon stupid. Diggs. In total? Yes. Half PPR. Jeez, man. Diggs had 265. Right, so I mean, the reason, right, I guess Stephon Diggs, he was going around four, probably around five. Um, people just forgot that he was good and discounted him being the number one wide receiver. Um, but I mean, Kelsey's value over the next closest tight end is just so much higher that, I mean, you can basically put in pen that Travis Kelsey will be a round one pick next year in every draft. Um, I almost think without exception, he'll be, he'll be kind of be taking the Gronk role, um, from the early 2000s where people were taking Gronk in the round one that you're going to see Kelsey doing that now. Um, so bo- both guys are very deserving. Um, so, but yeah, I, I, I get both, both ways. So. Um, I will argue Stefan Diggs here who I nominated for slumdog millionaire. Um, he's my slumdog oh. millionaire award winner. Uh, finished as wide receiver three. With 127 receptions on 166 targets for more than 1,500 yards and eight touchdowns. Yes, the eight touchdown number was low. It was not double digits. But I think I think in year one, you could not ask for better numbers. Unbelievable. Uh, his average draft yeah. position going into the season was wide receiver 27. 61 and a half overall, which is the sixth round. The God. R- the receiving yards leader was drafted on average in the sixth round of fantasy drafts. Sixth round, uh, not fourth, Alex, sixth on average. And that's across uh, all platforms. So what I'm saying is, and this is just strategery here. You want to get a stud running back early. And round or or Kelsey, I don't even care if if you don't have like Camara, Dalvin, CMC. I well, depending on who the quarterback Barkley, is in New Orleans Henry. or Henry. After like those four guys, I'm totally fine with Kelsey. But what I'm saying is, yep. take that stud running back early. I think if, you can justify Kelsey at one two next you, year. Oh, a million so. in redraft, Kelsey at one hundred one. Yeah. 100% yeah. absolutely possible. But what yeah. I'm saying is rounds four, five, six, take wide receiver ones. That's all you got to do. Just take a hammer them. The value in those yeah. early middle rounds at wide receiver is through the roof because otherwise, you know who else was there? Like JK Dobbins, who did nothing but sit on the bench for months. Your Cam guy. makers went in that range. Like those are the guys, those are the running back guys yeah. or Keenan Allen was there in the fifth round. Can you imagine? Yeah. Like that's where the value is in the early middle rounds. Right. I'm, I'm sure somebody had Derrick Henry, Keenan Allen, Stefan Diggs. Oh, for sure. Uh, 
like Travis Kelsey, like it, I'm sure somebody just had like the nastiest team ever and good good for them. I'm I'm very happy for them. Um since since I'm kind of blowing through yours, um, that's fine. I'll I've... I'll just stay on 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 the the worst value draft pick of the year. Um well I I have I have three options for you, and I'll let you pick this one too. So one is Levy on Bell. And I know he was going late, but he should have been going later. <laughs> even <laughs> even where he was going. Like nobody wanted him in any league. No, like you just didn't want him. And somebody still had to take him in like the sixth, fifth or sixth round because he was still sitting there. Uh, and you were just like, all right, fine. Whatever, I'll take this number one running back. It's fine. Option number two is Zach Ertz, who we talked up a lot preseason and did absolutely nothing all year. And then you have to throw Michael Thomas in there too, even though he played hurt and was just completely ineffective, but he was taking wide receiver one in pretty much every draft uh, and was not a wide receiver one. So of, of those three, who, who, would you, uh, who would you toss the worst value draft pick of the year? See, it's hard Do for me, though. you have another though? option? That's hard because, like, for me, In I retrospect. hate... retrospect. Well, I, I, hate, I hate saying that somebody was a draft bust when they got injured. I just don't like doing it because injuries happen to anybody. And... Zach Ertz wasn't injured, and he was completely ineffective. And that, then he got he, hurt. For spurts, but I feel like he also missed several games with injury. And at least... Spent, you say spurts or hurts? Exactly. That's why they call it spurts. Um, I feel like he spent s- several, or, or at least at least a, a decent amount of time away or missing games. Um, if not, a, at least doing a minor stint on the IR with the revised IR rules this season. Um, so I hope I, they keep those, by the way. Are they better? Is that what you said? No, I, I hope they do keep the revised IR rules because it kind of, you know. The flexibility was People nice. forgot about guys that, that were coming back. Yeah, it was. Yeah, I enjoyed it. Um, I'm with you on the fact that they all completely let down whoever drafted them. But given the fact that Z- injuries. Zach Ertz played the first six weeks of the year. And his points were 9.3, 6.7, 10.5, 4.9, 1.1, 1. 1, and 5.3. And then, yes, he missed one, two, three, four, five games. And then he came back. And his points were 4.1, 1.8, 7.9, 4.8, and 3.1. He had one game over 10 points. Jesus. Like, Out of how many games played? That's so bad. How many games did he play? Yes. Uh, he played 11 games. He had one game over I 10 to win it. You know, you know who honestly who came to mind and I, it couldn't be this person, but health health played a role, but he still played. Uh, but he didn't really miss games. He only missed one game and didn't have a carry in one game. And that is Todd Gurley. Mm. Who basically went off the cliff. He wasn't. No, nah, yeah. After would, their buy, I'll, I'll debate that though he because did not he, have, he was a top seven. He was like a top five running back the first like six weeks. Okay, and what did he finish as? Probably running back twenty, twenty two. Okay. Point one plus two point four plus six point five plus four divided by he led one, the league two, in touchdowns three, after four, like week five, seven six. After their week 10 by, he played six of seven games and averaged less than four points per game. Yeah, it was real bad. But he was he was good the first six weeks. Led the league in touchdowns. He had double digit points up to week nine. He only had two games below 10. But he cliff dived. He went cliff diving on their bye week in week 10 and came back and didn't put up. I went cliff diving. diving. I, went. <laughs> I love it. So yeah, I don't know. Uh, I would for the money. I would say Zach Ertz because I feel like he lit, he missed the the least amount of games. And to me, that's the disappointment is five. because 
Michael Thomas is putting up O's, but he's putting up O's in your IR slot. And you got somebody else on your bench. Zach Correct. Ertz, you're holding on to, and he's a bench bomb. Because you can't play him at that point either because he's not doing anything. You're starting guys like, I don't know, Bobby Tunyon and Dalton Schultz over him. And you got Zach freaking Ertz, who you probably drafted in the third or fourth round. So I would probably go Ertz out of that group. Right, because you were penciling him as a guaranteed top five tight end. 100%. And he should have been a Darren Waller there instead. But it wasn't. Nope. All right. Uh, my next award is for the most me- mediocre franchise in fan in regular football. And uh, sorry, my one third of whiskey drink is making me start to <laughs> stutter a little bit. It's an award show. It's it an award be, show. Alex and I had to have a cocktail. Yeah, it would it would not be an award show if everybody didn't end up drunk by the end of it. So if you're listening to this and you're out of age, um, enjoy a sip cup. Yes. Uh, my most mediocre franchise award goes to the Chicago Bears. I feel like it's telegraphed. That's boring. They yeah. signed up for more mediocrity next year. They they are bringing everybody back for another trip around the sun, <laughs> as we like to call it. Um, super uninspiring path forward. Super uninspiring leadership. Can't wait for them to sell the team. I feel like I posted that in like week two. Like yep. s- just sell the team. That was my only response. Anybody that thinks the Bears are in contention for any of the free agent for any of the free agent (laughs) or tradable quarterbacks um it's not going to happen um i would not be surprised to see nick Foles be the starting quarterback week one next year and them drafting a rookie quarterback at like pick 20 um they're just a disaster and i will pick them to be last i so hold on I would have picked them to be last in their division this next year, except that Matt Stafford won't be on the Lions. Um, so the Lions should be in last place pretty comfortably. Otherwise, I, if Stafford would have stayed there, I would have picked the Bears to finish last next year. By the way, Trubisky got engaged today, so congrats to that guy. The biscuit found his biscuit. <laughs> I love it. What's your next award? All right. Um, this, uh, this is what I'm titling the Kesha award. Um, and it, uh, goes to Juju Smith Schuster for a person most likely to create a TikTok that gets them killed. <laughs> Corvette, Corvette. <laughs> TikTok, make it stop. DJ, blow my speakers up. Yeah. Big, big Kesha guy in, uh, 2010. So. Um, yeah, the Kesha Award, I'm awarding to Juju Smith-Schuster, who likes to take TikToks on other teams. You you talk about a disappointment of Juju Smith-Schuster, where we were kind of looking at him as being a bounce back guy to start the season. Um, after being wide receiver five two years ago and him being healthy, um, he's a free agent now, I believe. Um, I have no idea what he looks like going forward. I believe he was still a wide receiver two this year, but just you talk about a colossal disappointment from a wide receiver two. It just didn't seem like like that he had that value the whole year. Yeah, I'm with you. Uh Juju was an absolute letdown. Um but it'll be still inter- wide receiver 18, which is crazy. It is. Um, it'll be interesting to see what he does this offseason if the Steelers bring him back or if they don't. 128 um, targets, 97 catches, only yeah. 831 yards, nine touchdowns. What a weird. I mean, that is a weird stat line. Yeah, I mean, I think it has a lot to do with Big Ben, though, honestly. Like, Ben wasn't really healthy uh, for stretches of the season, played games visibly hurt, played through the hurtness, anyways, as one does as a stealer. Um, and then you also saw you know, the ascension of Deontay Johnson, even though he has stone hands, he was still the wide receiver one in that offense. Uh, Ben had an average target depth that rivaled Drew Brees at times this season. Like the guy was throwing two yard completions that turned into 10, 15 yards at times. Like that was the Pittsburgh Steelers offense. Who had more fantasy points this year, Deontay Johnson or Juju Smith-Schuster? Deontay. No, he didn't. He finished the spot behind him. Okay, on a per game basis, Deontay by a million. No, wrong. If you take out the parts of the games where Deontay was hurt, yes. If Deontay played a game from start to finish, 
So take out the injured games at the beginning of the season. One million percent Deontay. The guy was a wide receiver one. Fringe. Top 15 anyway. Uh, I mean, Juju's 18. Deontay's 19 uh, on the season. But Deontay um, missed parts of several games at the beginning of the year. He, he missed one, one full game. One full game? Okay, but he also came out on like the second series in a different game. I'm just saying. I, I, yeah, that was right. That was correct. After, he had, after I traded for him in a league and then he got he had one catch and then he went negative and then lost me the week. Um, so yeah, no, you're, you're not wrong on that, but they're, they're very close to each other, which is just surprising to me. Cause I would have thought Tiante was several, several, several spots ahead of Juju Smith-Schuster. Yeah. Uh, is it your turn or mine? I'll, I'll keep going. Cause I, I think you're ahead of, of my pace. Um, the, this might be uh, this is a very sought after award, um, and it has to do with the best best training staff in the NFL. Yes. Um, there, there's only one there's... answer. <laughs> I love it. You froze on that, but you were so excited. Um, I. Uh, it, it has to be the Chargers training staff easily. Um, for for best training staff goes to the Chargers for puncturing Tyrod Taylor's lung and getting Justin Herbert into into a week two game against the Kansas City Chiefs. They took the air out of Tyrod Taylor's lung oh, and they no. breathed it into that offense. That's what oh, they did. No. It's true. Uh, if if I was saying the worst training staff, just for the record, I'd give that to the 49ers because literally every single player of theirs got hurt this year at some That's point. It's like two years in a row. Yeah. I, I I need to monitor if they replace their training staff or not, because if they don't, I will not own a single 49ers player next year. You know what? No, you know what we should do? We should volunteer to start stretching out the players on the sidelines. <laughs> so they don't get <laughs> hamstring injuries. <laughs> the Sacco stretchers. We stretch your sacks or something like that. Lord. Oh, so bad. Uh, I'll, I'll I'll do one more uh, while while we're going here. Um, th- this is a cross sport award. Oh no! Where uh, it's it's named after uh, Barry Bonds. Uh, the so the the Barry Bonds Steroid User of the Year award goes to Will Fuller the fifth. Uh, congratulations on wow. being a top five wide receiver, testing positive for steroids and just destroying multiple fantasy teams. So good wow. job by you. Also, though, will serve a one game suspension to begin next season. Um, yeah, I, I mean, where would you gonna draft sign, him? Who's going to sign him? I think he resigns. I, I, free, yeah, but Deshaun Watson isn't going to stay there. So does Will Fuller go to the Dolphins if he gets traded? Or does does Will Fuller go to the Jets as like a package deal if they trade for Deshaun Watson? Something to monitor, which could be real fun where wherever Deshaun goes, maybe Will Fuller goes. So uh, just something to watch out for. They both look great in Bears uniforms. Again, the Bears have no cap space. It's not going to happen. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. My next award is for the biggest tease. Oh, do I, do I win? No, you don't. Uh, oh. The biggest tease award goes to Christian McCaffrey. He played in all, he played in all of three games this season. <sighs> God. And averaged 27.3 fantasy points per game in those three games and half PPR scoring. <laughs> so sick. And that's all he played. Just three <laughs> games. He, he played two <laughs> games to start the season, missed a bunch of weeks, came back, lit him up, lit up for 30 points plus, and then didn't play again. Unbelievable, man. The unquestioned 101 pick in my mind. Unquestioned. Next, next fantasy football season has clearly, to be CMC. Clearly. So he's my biggest tease because it's like, oh, you want yeah. some of these? Oh, you want some of these? Okay. No, I'm just kidding. I take it away. I take it away. <laughs> oh, you want some of this again? Oh, you come back for more? Okay. No, you. that's all you get. <laughs> See you next season. That's okay, all you get. Okay, bye. Okay, bye. Thank you. Come again. Thank you. Uh, come and, again. And I, and I will come again if I get the first pick. And It I has to be him. CMC. Yeah, it has to be. Uh, yeah, it's just just another reason why every 
every draft should be an auction draft so that everybody can take a shot uh, at every yes. player. And not and we not need to be, change uh, ours for the record. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I need to I need to broach that subject with the league. Um, I will I will follow that up with a, awarding my uh, one hit wonder award uh, ah. for the for the fancy player that uh, hey struck a gold this year, but will literally never get close to what he just did. And it's Mike Davis. I mean, running back 12 on the year because of Christian McCaffrey getting hurt. I mean, do you think he's ever going to be a top 30 running back ever again? No. In a word. Probably no. not. Never. No, not so, close. No. Like Mike Davis, one hit wonder. Uh, you're going to be, you know, putting him up there with like the, the Lou Begas of the world for Mambo number five. Um, you know, maybe Chumbawamba for tub thumping. Um, you know, it just, just kind of depends on, on what your favorite one hit wonder is. But, uh, for this year it was Mike Davis. See, I thought for a while that the Mike Davis pickup was the best pickup in the league. It was really good. It was really good, but was it better than James Robinson? I mean, people were drafting James Robinson, so if they I mean, drafted and, in the like the week before the season started, then yes. But if they drafted like in August, probably not, yeah. because Fournette was still on the team. That's true, um, and he Fournette would have been. I mean, you saw what you've seen what playoff Lenny has done. Yeah, the last couple of weeks, and that's the guy that I thought the Jags were going to have all year, and um, would have been uh, would have been a top top twelve, top twelve running back. Uh, that uh, I'm, I'm going to keep going just because it it kind of parlays into our our board bets of the year. Um, oh no, do you have so some summaries of those? I do. Yeah, I have, I have every board bet. Um, that that we did during the year. Well, How definitely you beat more me. Next I, year. I put up some pretty stupid ones through the season. So you think that, but some would argue that I put up even more stupid ones, or stupider <laughs> ones, um, or the stupidest <laughs> ones. Um, so let's let's just let's just run them down real quick, right? Start to finish here. Episode one uh, for the fantasy football sackos. Uh, we argued who was going to be the better running back. Oh come on, uh, rookie running back, uh, and. <laughs> I Clyde Edwards Alaire and uh Jason had some guy by the last that had the last name Vaughn. Leonard um, Fournette wasn't even on the team. That's not fair. Yeah, so J- Jason had some guy named Vaughn, Vince Vaughn or something like that. Um so I I I won <laughs> I won our first board bet. Um Trust me, this gets much worse for me than it does for you, Jason, the rest of the way. Um, <laughs> more, <laughs> more quarterback fantasy points, Ryan Tannehill or Gardner Minshew? Um, <laughs> quarterback seven. <laughs> quarterback seven, Ryan Tannehill. Where'd Minshew finish? Dude, I don't even, I don't, not, he's not even in the picture. You don't even um, know? No. Oh, I have uh, to look this up. Probably... Hold on. We cannot move past this. This is fantastic. All right, here. Uh, Minshew so, finished as quarterback 23. Oh, that's actually better than I thought. Because um, he threw a pass. You have so, to throw a pass to finish as 23. <laughs> it's not true. Oh. Um, so I... I I thought the Jaguars were going to be considerably better than they were. Uh, it was a clear miss on my part. I thought DJ Chark was going to be a top, an easy wide receiver too. He wasn't. I knew the Jaguars were going to be down in a lot of games and I thought game script was going to fit. And plus Minshew had like 350 rushing yards last year. Um, it just didn't work clearly. Um, <laughs> we'll fo- follow that up with Leonard Fournette over under running back 12 and a half. Uh, I thought he was going to be a, a running back one and Jason didn't. And Jason was right. Oops. But I, I do caveat that with, if you take Leonard Fournette and put him where James Robinson was and give him all what James Robinson got the whole year, then he clearly would have been a running back one. So if, if I, I don't even feel too bad nuts, about that one. We'd all have an Alex Krogh Christmas. 
Okay. Um, my best call of the year was Miami defense top ten fantasy. Um, Man, I, I took the took the over over top ten, and Jason was under. I I drilled that one. I'm gonna eat some a crow on that one. I can't even give you enough credit on that because they were not only were they just like fantastic, they were defense number three on the season in terms of fantasy points, and uh, yep. single handedly won me several weeks. And uh, yeah, thank you for that. Almost matchup proof. Yeah, I yeah, I drilled that and and they were like fantasy defense like 28 last year or something like that and I I nailed the top 10. They they got Can't the cornerbacks. I think their defense is going to be really good next year. Um and and a defense that you won't have to take first next year, but probably you could sit there and and take them a little earlier as the second defense. No, uh, Steelers are still going number up. 1. Steelers are still going number 1 easy next year. Okay. No, I right. I I agree with that, but I think they're the second defense off the board, um, the especially when you look at their division. Yeah, yeah. I I would take the Dolphins at two. I like um, it because you you look at their division. They they have the Patriots. We have no idea what they're going to be doing at quarterback. Yes, the Bills are are a tough matchup, um, but yeah, I just Dude, Trevor Lawrence is intimidating. It's just where. No, the the they're in the AFC South, not the East. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, I meant so it's, I meant the, it's Jets. the Jets. Well, okay, I'm sorry, Justin Fields. Yeah, so, yeah, whatever. So, <laughs> so, all right, keep going. So we're we're two 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 through four board bets here. Um, all right, uh, we did, we did Alan Lazard versus Larry Fitzgerald in the battle of the of the future Hall of Famers. Um, and, uh, this came down to the wire. Uh, Jason said Alan Lazard would have a better year. And I said, Fitzgerald would, uh, this came down to 7.4 points. Lazard got hurt and had Uh, reconstructive ab surgery. And did he still beat Larry? Yeah, he did. (laughs) He did. (laughs) He did. So that, that's one for you. Uh, I was, 80, 81.3 points versus 73.9 points. What a garbage uh, bet that terrible. is for a couple of fucking... Oh my god, it's terrible. It's really bad. Um, my reasoning was because Fitzgerald has never had it under 100 yard or under 100 targets in a year. He only had 72 this year. He's also never um, had DeAndre Hopkins on his team. That. I get it, but I... Thought their offense would still be good enough to support him. All right. um, Here's another blazer. Uh, Mike (laughs) Williams versus Deshaun Jackson. Um, You had Deshaun Jackson Uh, and I had Mike Williams. Williams. I even looked this up. Yeah, I even looked this up. I'm assuming Mike Williams won. Uh, I'm I'm giving myself the win. Um, But there's no way that Mike Williams didn't win that one. Mike Williams finished as wide receiver 50. Deshaun Jackson. Oh boy. Deshaun Jackson finished as wide receiver 120. <laughs> <laughs> he played in oh, you talk about some five great games. <laughs> Who could have seen that coming? Oh, his um, hamstrings. All right. Yeah, th- this is this is where it gets this is where it gets really bad for me. Um Justin Jefferson, will he be better or worse than wide receiver 30 on the year? Oh, oh, we should take a drink for every one that we lose. That's terrible. I mean, I don't, wide receiver I don't, 30? I don't have enough. Yeah. It was real bad. Uh, oh you on that one. God. Can right, we talk about where that he up finished? Follow that up a week later. He was wide Chase receiver Claypool. seven. Seven. Yeah. Chase Claypool. Will he be wide receiver 40 or worse week six on? And I took worse. And he was clearly better. Than well, he was wide receiver 23 40. on the season. On the season. Well, yeah. So now that's probably better on. than 40 from whatever that week. No, no, weeks. 
week can, six on though. I can look it up because that 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 include yeah. Can you? Yes, I can. Week All right, I'll, week I'll six on. Well, week six on. I love this. Uh, half PPR. Riveting what podcast, kind of scoring Steph. do you want to do? Yeah, ha- half PPR. All right, next next board bet. While well, Jason's looking that up. Derrick Henry, weeks 10 through 13. Remember that brutal schedule? Uh, Jason said he would not average 10 points a week um, for, for weeks 10 through 13. Um, and I was like, of course he's going to because he's going to score a touchdown. Uh, just as a friendly reminder, Derrick Henry, weeks 10 through 13, played Indy at Baltimore, at Indy, and then uh, Cleveland. He scored 11.4, 19.7, and then at Indy week 12, he scored 37.5. Jesus. Um, which almost put me over when the t- average uh, just in the one game. Yeah, when I talk about bad bets, that was probably the worst one I made of the whole season. That was just, that was hubris. Uh, Claypool, by the way, f- from weeks 6 to 16, because we, uh, mm-hmm. we're only talking fantasy oh. championships here, he was wide receiver 30. Oh. So, so he did beat it by oh, 10 Oh, that's spots. actually not as... Fi- Hold on. Hold on. What if you include week 17? All right, hold on. 17. Go. And we refresh. And we search Clay. Uh, wide receiver 25. Oh, okay. So that doesn't help me. No. But either way, I mean, for, 40 was obviously too high um, for me, but I, I did not think he was going to be a wide receiver too the rest of the way. Um so but it's pretty yeah, good. I lose. And then and then some some random one uh we said it was Drew Locke week 16. Yeah, he'd have over 20 points uh because he was facing the Chargers. I lost that because I took the over. Um so I, I had four wins and Jason had six wins. Um so you got smoked. So better so I lost. So we need to come up with a punishment board bet of the year. Board, board bets of the year, Jason, you win. Um, next year, I'm coming for that ass. Also, there need, there's going to be a trophy for this. Board bets of the year. There's going to be a trophy that we are going to emblazon with our names and pass back and forward. Or I can just hold on to it and keep putting my own name on it if I keep assuming I keep winning year after year, which is probably the most likely outcome of this. Wow. All right. Okay. Uh, thank you uh, in a roundabout way of uh, calling me smarter than you. It's, uh, you know, it's not surprising. It just, I'm surprised that it took 60 plus episodes to get there. Okay. <laughs> and to go along with, <clears throat> to go along with um, <laughs> your lovely, uh, board bet summary. Uh, we're gonna t- we're g- we're gonna cover my next award, which is the Tana Thrilling Player of the Year, aka the TPOY. Oh no! It is the inaugural Tana oh, Thrilling God. Player of the Year award. It is going to go to none other than the namesake Ryan Tannehill, who had a an average <laughs> draft position <laughs> in an average draft position so of quarterback twenty one. He was drafted 152nd overall. No respect. Put some respect on Ryan <laughs> Tannehill's name. Finishes quarterback seven, 315 of 481 pass attempts for almost or just over 3,800 yards, 33 touchdowns, seven picks. Also, 43 rushes <laughs> for 266 rushing yards and seven touchdowns on the ground. Which let That's me a just lot say, of rushing touchdowns for somebody with Lamar Henry Jackson. He is the better Lamar Jackson. So when we okay. dedicated our second podcast, I believe, called "Do Not Draft Lamar Jackson," it is going to be "Do Not Draft Ryan Tannehill" next year because he is the <laughs> better Lamar Jackson yeah. in all facets of the game. So, thank you, Ryan Tannehill, for being the TPOY. In our inaugural sackies, I would kiss you if you were here, you beautiful man. Um, yeah, it's so great okay. being uh, right about something 
that's like a top 10 thing when literally it was the most non so it was the most non like chalk thing like none of the analysts that I watched at any point or read said that Ryan Tannehill was going to be a thing and then he finishes freaking QB7 it was ah I do love you, being do, right. Do you need a sling for throwing your shoulder out from patting yourself on the back? Oh, I thought you were going to say for carrying these huge anyone? nuts around because yes. Yes, I do. Oh, that's not actually not where I was going. Um, <laughs> trying to figure out where to go. How, how many do you have left? Four? Four, four plus the end? Oh, I got I got a, at least five or six. No, it's my turn. I'm on a roll here. Okay, yeah. Yeah, go go for a couple. All I got, right, I got so, four, four left other than the end. All right, so next up, I have uh, most likely to use a CPAP machine. <laughs> and that's Andy <laughs> Reid. Uh, oh, or, <laughs> or most likely... <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I got it. I got you with that one. Or is going to be uh, most likely to wish for a defroster... Under under the Christmas tree because of his week after, one. Yeah, fall. week week one appearance. <laughs> <laughs> COVID protocols. All right. So I'm gonna I'm just gonna wear a a fog mask. <laughs> Turn turns out that it's the only game that Clyde Edwards Alaire got carries because Reed was just like, ah, oh, just run it. I can't see what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> Should have seen that one coming. Oh, oh, oh. next up, I have a best almost burner account, and that is for Matt Patricia, (laughs) a.k.a. Eddie P. Lions fan. If you have not, if you have not like given yourself the joy of reading fake burner account tweets from Eddie P. Lions fan. Like this is gold. So for the longest time, people actually thought it was like a legit burner account for Matt Patricia. He was tweeting things that were like anti lions and anti Matt Patricia. And his response was coach Matt. These are some example tweets. Coach Matt Patricia did what he could with the roster that Quinn gave him. Bob Quinn was the problem. So-called Lions fans think it will get better without Patricia. Little do they know that the issue is Bob Quinn. Coach Patricia could only do so much. And these tweets go on and on and on. And by the way, his name was Eddie P. Matt Patricia's middle name is Matthew Edward. He said that he had his his Twitter bio. He had like a wife and three kids. Matt Patricia has three freaking kids. It was the perfect burner account. And by the way, if you've looked at Matt Patricia for more than 15 seconds, pencil behind his ear, giant scruffy beard, the guy looks like the kind of guy where if he came up with his own burner account, it would literally be Eddie P. Lions fan. I'm just saying, if he did not look like a doofus, then this whole thing would not be believable. But because Matt Patricia is a doofus, it legitimized the entire operation and they ran with it. There were articles. It was on Deadspin, fan cited, Sports Illustrated. It was everywhere. It was breaking news that it was fake because it was so unbelievable. I loved it. Like Ke- Ke- Kevin Durant, it would have made Kevin Durant proud. The 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 legitimacy behind this burner account. Uh, I have. I also have a burner account. It's at the FF Sackos. If you like to follow us on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> it's funny because a lot more people follow that than they that follow me. So, uh, yeah, same. W- w- always weird to have a burner account with more followers than than your actual self. Um, I'd I'd like to give a um an award for the fantasy podcast co-host of the year. Oh, um, and it goes to Gabriel Miramontes of First Round Fantasy yes! who sat in who sat who sat in for me uh, after I had a kid. Sorry, Jason. No, that's fine. Uh, okay. Shout out to First Round Fantasy. If you do not follow them, you need to. They are like semi new to the Twitter game. They're bigger on Insta. 
Uh, let's go ahead and see if I can't, because they actually like just recently the, followed us on Twitter. And the, the, um, right, the, the biggest Raiders fan we know. I didn't even know they existed, um, but apparently he is one. So they are at FRF football on Twitter. You should go through them to follow. They are actually, Gabriel is extremely knowledgeable. They're really fun to listen to. If you don't listen to them, you should go ahead and give First Round Fantasy a listen. They are fun to listen to. And thanks, Gabe, for stepping in for Alex. You're actually much better looking than he is. Um, wow. <clears throat> now, if I could almost give a, uh, an award or semi give an award to my fantasy co-host, um, the most likely to use props during sex award goes to Alex Krog because props. since the beginning, Alex has been one with the use of props and only OGs remember this bad boy right here. And oh, yeah, the poo emoji, the, the crazy Adam gay size. Exactly. And that fired. was like, that was, that was podcast number one. Numero uno. Yeah, it was early. No. If you have not listened or watched, we used to post the entire podcast to YouTube, but uh, now we mostly post clips. So if you have not watched the first clips. podcast, you need to. The audio valid, the audio quality is shit. Oh, it's so bad. It's so bad. But still super fun. Yep. Uh, I'd like to award the 2020 Fantasy Football Podcast of the Year to the Fantasy Footballers. Okay. That's it. Congrats to them. <laughs> I think Dude. we're more entertaining, but whatever. We're more likely to slur. <laughs> <laughs> we actually talk about real world issues. Like them talking. Like the about, Bachelor. Well, yes, obviously that goes without saying. But like. Yeah. The world is melting down. There's riots and there's protests in the street. And they like, they like scooted past a lot of stuff, which was interesting to see. Uh, we've talked about it throughout the show. Like, we're not afraid to talk about anything. And we almost feel like it's our duty to like we, you guys choose to listen you to said us. Duty. Yes. You guys listen to us. We uh, owe it to you to be ourselves and tell you how we feel about all things, not just fantasy football. Um, most likely, I'm going to follow that up with this. Most likely to have been a foreskin in his previous life. Good lord, that goes to Sean McDermott. Have you seen that man? Sean he is McDermott, my uh, the Bills coach. Yes, yes, absolutely, yes. Without a hat on, he he looks he looks like a penis. <laughs> he looks like a pale penis. Absolutely. Sean McDermott, sans hat. One million oh, percent. No. Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, no. Simultaneously, my ugliest NFL coach of the year award goes to Sean McDermott. Congrats, Sean. <laughs> oh, my God. You're looking out, buddy. That's, that's just mean. Uh, speaking, <laughs> speaking of penises. Um, yeah, I'd please. Like to, I'd, like to, I'd like to award the pulling out award. Uh, and and oh. And congratulate Philip Rivers, who uh, retired and has finally learned how to pull out of something after having nine children. <laughs> You're really saving those hard hitting awards till the end, aren't you? Yeah, we're yeah. Sure are. Dear Lord. Uh, outside of my moment of the year, this is my last award. Yep, I got one left too. Um, my most convincing fake orgasm award goes to Aaron Rodgers. Hmm. Because that man is so convincing on hard counts. 20%. 20% of Green Bay's offensive snaps have hard counts. Since, and these are 2019 numbers, since 06, Aaron Rodgers leads all quarterbacks with 84 passes thrown on free plays. He has more than 2,000 yards on free plays, which is wow. twice as much as the next most. That's crazy. Which is big That's a ben. lot of yards. Since 2010, he has thrown for 225 air yards a season on offsides calls alone. Hmm. 
which means that basically once every other game, he gets a free shot downfield averaging 25 yards, which is unbelievable. Yeah, that's pretty nuts. So Aaron Rodgers, most convincing fake orgasm because you fool everybody on your hard counts. I can only imagine see, how well that that would translate. See, I, I thought you were going to go with Aaron Rodgers because he dates women and then they leave him because they because he can't make them orgasm. Well, I was going to go. I mean, if we want to talk about that and it was going to be like most likely to, to date somebody <laughs> half of half his age. Okay. Um, I, I have one last one and this is a absolute terrible segue. So there is no segue. Um, the, uh, the, uh, podcast listener of the year, Jason, uh, goes to your mom. So thank you, Mrs. <laughs> Shell Cross for listening. <laughs> I'll make sure to send it to her. Oh man. She gets a Saki award. Congratulations. Stop talking about the, the Saki and my mother in the same sense. It's in, it's in the mail. <laughs> all right alex uh i'll leave it up to you to talk about your sacco moment of the year yeah podcast moment of the year for me uh was uh week 11 uh it was just like the worst waiver wire show there was nobody to even talk about and I just, it's not that I wanted, didn't want to be here talking to you about fantasy football, but I mean, pretty much all my team sucked. I was eliminated everywhere. It was week 11. I still did slog through like five more weeks of terrible fantasy content and all these players just sucked. Um, and, uh, you just, I just had enough. And so I, we, we both melted down in laughter for a solid two minutes. Uh, it's from our, podcast episode 48 of ours it's a week 11 waiver wire show um so just it was absolutely wonderful uh, if you want to go back and listen to it it's pod uh it's timestamp 2458 of the week 11 episode 48 uh where we just we just lost it for two minutes i'll see what i could do to just roll the clip here our next uh, who, who else we got that's just going to be great i can't wait to talk about whoever this next crappy player is <laughs> it's like the poop facta of waivers man <laughs> well that's waivers poop facta can't <laughs> just poop <laughs> You're gonna hate it. You're gonna hate it so much. Cam Akers. (laughs) 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 He had ten. He had ten carries. Oh man, you're driving me nuts. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Cam Akers. I'm crying That's- and I don't know if it's because I'm laughing or <laughs> just because this is so bad. <laughs> look, look. He rushed 10 times for 38 yards in the week in the Rams week 10 win <laughs> over the Seahawks, okay? Is this are you talking about Frank Gore or Cam Akers? <laughs> <laughs> it's a three-way split it's it's terrible malcolm brown had eight touches and two touchdowns and daryl henderson had eight touches <clears throat> maybe they're it's trying. okay it's okay if it's in a three-way that's the golden rule i believe that was an <laughs> snl skit right so <laughs> oh Pass. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Put a zero dollar bid on Cam Akers in case he does something over the final two months of the season. Uh, next oh, up, Wayne God. Gallman. Touchdown. <laughs> Touch, touchdowns. <laughs> touchdowns and force. <laughs> oh, touchdowns and four straight. <laughs> Devonta Freeman is still hurt. <laughs> and the Giants are on a bye.
<laughs> Look, it's great. These waivers are great. These are league winning. <laughs> Waivers. Whew. <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to make it through this one. <laughs> Wayne Gallman. Oh. Hilarious. I just remember dying. Well, let's dive into our next gold freaking player. Cam Akers. Bah, just ha, ha, ha. Crap. Just so crappy. Like. I, I went to go to find that clip today as I was preparing for this, and I listened to it like three more times just because it made me laugh because <laughs> like, it was just awful. The clip that I think of uh, still to this day, um, even though we've been recording for, can you believe it, like eight months now, um, yeah. is one of our earlier clips about uh, the Alan Lazard over Larry Fitzgerald board bet. Yeah, it's terrible. And the the cameo, the cameo <laughs> reference yeah. that we made. <laughs> yeah, we it's we so tried. Funny. We tried to get Alan Lazard. I to... sent the guy money. He sent it back. Oh, did he really? Yeah, he didn't do it. They sent it back. I paid for it. <laughs> he just didn't do it. I literally yeah, we... paid for it through a cameo. He just didn't do the damn thing. Yeah, we we tried to get Alan Lazard to call me an idiot. Uh, yes, because, and I because, told him it was for yeah, our it podcast been intro. Yeah, and it's it's really too bad that 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 didn't happen because it it would have been great. Alan Lazard, if you ever watch this, please call my podcast co-host Alex Krogh here an idiot because he is one. What's up? For man? not believing in you. Hey, good good uh, good job uh, dropping passes. Lord. All right. Well, we're going to roll that clip right here. Yeah. Alan Al Lazard doesn't, doesn't do it for me. You don't um, know anything about him. You know, I, just for that, I'm going to go on whatever that website is. And I'm going to pay him $15 to tell you that you're bad at fantasy football. You know that app? He's on Cameo. Yeah, he's on Cameo. Yeah. Hey, tell my podcast co-host that he sucks because he thinks you suck. I literally really hope Larry Fitzgerald's not on that website selling himself out for fifteen dollars to record a thirty-second video. I think I think that tells you pretty much everybody everybody what you need to know about these two players. Honestly, it's not his actual rate. It's not his actual rate. You cannot do. I was I was exaggerating. <laughs> Hold on, I'm gonna tell you what his rate is. I'm, pu I'm pulling it up. It's seventy five. Oh wow, that's respectable. Oh, Seventy-five dollars. I would really hope Larry Fitzgerald is not on that. Oh man, let's see, Larry Fitzgerald. Yeah, he is not. Just from a quick, quick search, but that's. Oh no, is he? Uh, no, he's not. I mean, why would oh, he be? Okay. He has all. He has all the money from playing in the league for twenty <laughs> years. Yeah, no, it, po it popped up. Get personal, get personalized messages from your favorite. And then Larry and then Fitzgerald is also in there. Uh, but Larry it's, it's the Larry cable Thomas. guy? No, it's, it's Larry Thomas, a.k.a. the soup Nazi. <laughs> oh, well, that's different. No soup for you. That's oh. that's what. Uh, yeah. I wonder so, if he charges yeah, more than Alan Lazard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it's $65, actually. Oh, so, Al so Alan's got him by 10 bucks. There you yeah, go. Pretty close. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, give, give me Fitzgerald all, all day, every day. He's never had under a hundred targets and Lazard has never had over a hundred targets. So there you go. Greatness. That was greatness. You called Dropping him. Did you pack. realize we bet a million dollars? You said he was going to be a future hall of famer. Do you realize that? Y well, yeah, I do. You drew as you owe me like a million dollars, right? Well, he's still very young and they're not drafting receivers. <laughs> so I'm just yeah, saying clearly. there's a chance. Jordan okay. Love isn't going to be out there passing, catching passes next year. So 
J Love. My goodness. Thank you for listening to the first annual inaugural. The inaugural. Sackies. This has been fantastic for me. Has it been great for you, Alex? I hope somebody found it entertaining. I sure did. Um, if you have any, if you have any awards that we missed, uh, please send them to us. We'll be happy to post them. Um, please try to pop us. I, I would enjoy that. Uh, and then next week we got uh, got Super Bowl props. Uh, I'm already in on Kansas City, who I think is going to destroy Tampa Bay next week. But we'll we'll have a bunch of props for you, uh, money line overs, uh, and then we'll start uh, time to kind of shift gears after that. And start looking at uh, 2021 fantasy season, which is just long, long way away, but never too early to start. Let's see this here. What is the spread? It's uh, uh, three. Is that it? Yeah, 56 and a half, the over under. I would, take minus the, three. I would take KC minus three and I would smash the over. Yep. Um, it, for, for future reference, the first time they played this year, just as a primer, the over-under was three and a half. Uh, Kansas City played at Tampa Bay. That was the game Tyreek Hill had 200 yards in the first quarter. Um, because their D-backs are trash. Yeah, they're very slow. Um, and so, K- Kansas City was minus three and a half. They got up big in that game. And the second half, there was like no points scored. And, and Tampa Bay somehow covered. There's no way that Kansas City doesn't win by more than like seven points in this game. I know I just said that about the Packers game. But Tampa, or Tampa Bay just can't. Like, Kansas City's defense is good. It's actually really underrated. They're very opportunistic, especially when they get up. Um, Tom Brady just threw three picks. Like I, they, they will, they will not be able to keep up with Mahomes and their scoring. Um, I, I like Kansas City in a in a route. Same, absolutely same. Yep. Lots of debate coming next week on the fantasy football <laughs> <Sackers. laughs> I disagree. Tom wins. All right. Okay. <laughs> Let's not be ridiculous. Let's transfer to our social media page. Thank you guys so much for listening. We are at the FF Sackos everywhere. We are only 998,000 followers away on Twitter from a million. So if you guys could get us there, that'd be awesome. If not, we're on then top of the world. Hey, the, the we're on top understand. of the world. Hey. <laughs> These sackies were fantastic. I can't wait. Well, we need to do an award show every other month. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I am Jason. He is Alex. Have a good night. This is the third bi-weekly Sacco's award show coming to you live from Alex's spare bedroom. Call it an office. It's more official. I mean, there's a bed right there. The bedroom. Oh, we didn't even get to talk about The Bachelor. That's a damn shame. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Football Sackos podcast. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter at the FF Sackos.